hey guys welcome back in today's video we are going to be making hands down the best gluten-free pizza dough and sauce you've ever tasted so let's get started today we're going to be using the king arthur's double zero pizza flour um, this is a neapolitan style pizza crust which is just a very simple thin crust so we're just going to follow the package instructions and we're going to combine two and a third cups of the flour, one and a quarter cups of lukewarm water. Um, we're going to do one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of sugar, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons instant yeast. Um, and this is pretty much just a dump recipe, so just go ahead and combine everything into a bowl and mix well. Um, one thing to note is warm water is very crucial in order for the yeast to be activated and the dough to rise. So you do want to make sure you have lukewarm water. Um, I recommend anywhere from 100 to 110 degrees. Um, if you don't have a thermometer to measure the temperature of your water, that is totally fine. Just as long as it is lukewarm to touch. Um, and then once everything is well combined and mixed... We're going to cover it and let it rest on the counter to rise. It's going to take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. So in the meantime, we'll get started on our sauce. Here we have one 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes. Um, so what we're going to do is just pour that in a large mixing bowl and gently crush them. Um, or you can use a hand mixer if you prefer. I'm just going to crush until everything is just broken down a little bit I still want some slight chunks but not huge tomatoes in there so next I'm gonna add um, two cloves of garlic I grated them just to have a more um, finer chop I have about four to five leaves of basil that I also chopped some salt pepper and some oregano which is totally optional and then four tablespoons of olive oil and again i'm just going to work it with my hands making sure everything is well incorporated and just crushing those tomatoes down a little more um, and guys this sauce is absolutely phenomenal um, this is something you could definitely um, reduce down a little bit on the stove and serve over pasta um, some freshly grated parmesan it it's just so simple and fresh and the perfect pairing to our Neapolitan style pizza crust. So next, we are going to form our dough. Um, as you can see, it has doubled in size. So I'm just going to get some more of my gluten-free pizza flour and gently flour a work surface. In my case, it's just my countertop. And I'm going to divide the dough in half. And with each half, I'm gonna gently fold it over onto itself about four to six times, just to slightly form a ball. And then I'm going to flip it over and just mold it into a ball shape. And as I twist the dough, I am gently tucking it under and pulling toward myself just to create tension in the dough. Um, so I'm gonna set that one aside and again, gently fold the dough over onto itself and flip it over. You can uh, throw a little more flour on top if it's sticking to your hand and just roll. And as you roll, tuck under and pull towards yourself. And this is just to create tension. Um, so at this point, we're going to cover these doughs and let them rest in the refrigerator to set for um, about 30 minutes. As that's going, you're gonna preheat your oven to 500 degrees with your pizza stone. Um, if you don't have a pizza stone, you can also use a baking sheet. Um, one key thing is the dough is very fragile at this point. It doesn't hold together well until after it has been baked. So I recommend rolling your dough out directly onto your stone or onto a piece of parchment paper and then transfer that to your baking sheet. Um, just because if you try to roll it out on a counter and then transfer, it most likely will fall apart on you. So just roll it out onto your um, pizza stone or your baking sheet. And then we're going to gently drizzle with olive oil and just work that all around the dough. Um, and here you can see I'm just kind of molding it a little more 
into a circle, trying to form a little bit more of a crust without burning myself. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and work the olive oil all around. We're going to pre-bake this um, pizza crust just to help it firm up a little bit before we add all of our toppings. Next, I'm going to grab a fork and just gently poke some holes. If not, it will bubble up pretty big <laughs> in the oven um, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to poke some holes, let the air release while it bakes. So I'm going to throw this in the oven and let it bake for about five to seven minutes. Um, and again, this is just to help cook the crust through. Um, since we don't have a pizza oven, um, I do this in a two-step process. So once it has baked for about five to seven minutes, I'm going to bring it out and add in that sauce and then the toppings of your choice. Here I have some bell peppers, some mushrooms, some tomatoes, um, hot Italian sausage, some bacon, and of course some more cheese. I put a little salt and pepper and oregano and that is it. Guys, this was phenomenal. You have got to try it. And here is the crust. You can see like it did not crumble. It doesn't taste like cardboard or that weird cracker crust it tastes like a normal pizza. So we did a few different flavors. Here's just your traditional pepperoni um, pizza uh, made by my sous chef. <laughs> Um, this one was absolutely delicious too. And guys, you've got to try that pizza sauce. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. It is so full of flavor and just so fresh. Um, next we did a Alfredo pizza topped with some bacon and some parsley. This one was super delicious as well. I made, um, some homemade Alfredo sauce and then a carnitas pizza. This was with a guacamole salsa, avocados, carnitas, the pizza blend cheese, some cilantro, and lime. You could totally add some sliced jalapenos, but that's it. Simple, fresh, and delicious. <laughs>